in XPS analysis why P orbitals splits into two peaks and why the intensities are vary in this ratio. Similarly, why D orbitals have intensity in this ratio. And similarly, why the F orbitals split into two and why the intensity of the peaks are in this ratio. The intensity ratio for P orbital, for D orbital and for F orbital can be calculated by this formula. In this formula, this J is basically equal to the angular momentum plus minus the spin orbital angular momentum. This is basically called total angular momentum. This is the common nomenclature to represent XPS peak here. Let's suppose we have the P orbital peak 2P 3 by 2 here. So in this case, 2 is in here. P is basically orbital angular momentum. For P, we have orbital angular momentum is equal to 1. And this J is basically 3 by 2 which is equivalent to j is equal to l plus minus s we know that p orbital d orbital and f orbital should double it in xps analysis but in today's video i am going to explain that why the intensity the height ratio of p orbital d orbital and f orbital in this ratio 1 ratio 2 2 ratio 3 and 3 ratio 4 this simply means that we know that uh, this L is basically orbital angular momentum. So if L is equal to zero, so we will get a single uh, XPS peak like for S orbital. This is basically S orbital. This is S orbital. So for S orbital, we will get single peak because the orbital angular momentum is zero. Let's understand, we know that this, this is electron here and this is the nucleus here. This is the nucleus. So this electron is moving around the nucleus so the, because of that is orbital orbital means it's moving in the orbitals so that is basically orbital angular momentum and this electron is also spinning around its x axis and that is basically we call spin here and this is not orbital this is this is, this is basically spin and it has two value whether it spin up or spin down there is another way to explain this this is the total uh, momentum basically angular momentum uh, orbital or spin that is basically e j equal to l plus minus s here and this is we call j j coupling here j j coupling in quantum mechanics and we also call spin orbit splitting or doublet here so now this means that for p orbital we have angular momentum is equal to one here so if, if angular momentum is greater than zero so we will get doublet here in all these cases you see in this case, a orbital angular momentum is 2 here. In this case, the orbital angular momentum is 3 here. Right? So, from here, we get this ratio. Let me explain for this one here. In simple words, we can see simply here that this area shows the concentration. The concentration of the element, if it is carbon, oxygen, whatever. So, it can, we can see that the, the concentration of this small peak is half of this. This is why the ratio is here. But I am going to explain it from uh, this uh, formula here. Right? So we know this is the nomenclature to represent the XPS peak. This is basically uh, NLJ here. Like uh, let me write here one peak here like this. Uh, 2P 3 by 2 here. So this N is basically represented by this 2 here and this is the principal quantum number here. And this P represented by L here. This is P orbital for which we have L is equal to 1. And this J is represented by this 3 by 2. And this is basically called the total angular momentum. And we, we, we explain this L plus minus S here. And this is, so this is basically the common nomenclature here to represent the XPS peak. So we explain that this is the common nomenclature to represent XPS peak. Now let's explain that why P orbitals have the ratio of 1 ratio 2 here. Let's prove this from this formula. We know that for this, uh, to prove this, we, we have to uh, use this formula for degeneracy that 2j plus 1. From this formula, we will derive uh, this 1 ratio 2 here. Now, let's, let's see this is oxygen atom and this is this is 1s uh, orbital, this is the 2s and this is the 2p here. And we can simply see here that this 2p is split into 2 here. The 2p 3 by 2 and 2p half here. And we can see that and this this is the above is basically 2p 3 by 2 and the below one is basically 
to be half and it has two electron and it has four electron so this means that this ratio is basically two ratio four or simply we can say that one ratio two here this is the, but but now i have to prove this from this formula now let's see here uh, this two uh, j here uh, j in one case we have this uh, uh, 3 by 2 here so 3 by 2 uh, plus 1 here so this 2 2 cancel and we have we get 4 here in this one will right now let's see if from the second case uh, this 2j so this is 2 in the second case the j is basically a half here a half plus 1 so it, we get 2 below here so this means that the ratio is basically uh, for 2 ratio 4 or 2 ratio 4 here or we can see that 1 ratio 2 so this is how uh, we prove that the, the, the p orbitals intensity is in this ratio here and similarly for d orbitals we know that n is equal to 2 here and we know the, 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 the this is basically nlj in this nomenclature here and for d orbital we know that this is basically uh, the one one case is basically the d5 by 2 another case is d3 uh, by 2 here right so we use the same approach here and with the help of 2j plus 1 we get that the ratio is basically here this is not basically 3 ratio 2 but this is basically the ratio is basically 6 ratio 4 here because in d orbital we have 10 electrons here so then we can uh, normalize or simplify is to 3 ratio 2 here with the help of this way let, let me prove here if you wish because this for, for the first one here uh, 2j the j value is 5 by 2 here 5 by 2 plus 1 so we see we get 6 here and for the second case we get 4 and we simplify this two. similarly for f orbital we get this ratio here and this ratio is like this one here 8 ratio uh, 6 and we can simplify this to 4 ratio 3 here this means that f orbital has 14 electrons and this means that uh, this is basically we call degeneracy and from this formula we can easily calculate this uh, intensity ratio